Hi, I'm Teresa and welcome to my channel. Today I have such an exciting video because I am talking about Not My Problem by Kira Smith. So if you do not know, this is the author of the Falling In Love montage, which is one of my favourite books of all time. This is her new book, it releases at the end of May and I am in love with it. <laughs> this was my most anticipated release of the year and it has completely lived up to my expectations and I'm very very excited to be talking about it today. So just before I get started on talking about the book and showing you some of my reactions to it, I will give you a little summary. So this follows a main character called Aideen and she is having a bit of a hard time. So she has also family issues, she's got her mother as a single parent but she struggles with alcoholism, they're poor, there's a lot of issues there in her relationship and they're really just struggling to get by. She's got some issues with her best friend and maybe growing apart a bit and academically she's not doing very very well because she's just got such bigger things to worry about and so when she discovers her kind of nemesis if you like Nick Maeve who's like this know-it-all swatty girl a bit rubs you a bit the wrong way a bit annoying having a complete breakdown because of stress she ends up somehow roped into pushing Maeve down the stairs to help her lighten her workload a bit and this starts Aideen off on this journey of doing favours for other people in exchange for favours for her and helping solve other people's problems on kind of ignoring her own. And through this you meet different friends, there's a relationship between Aideen and Maeve, it's wonderful, it's great and I love this book an awful lot. I'll talk about it properly in my review but although you've got all of these quite difficult subjects, quite hard-hitting subjects, it's still so joyful, such a lot of fun to read and I really truly loved it. So yes, I'll just put in some clips now. So first up is me opening my package of the books. I was sent two copies and I'll talk about the second one in a minute and these are just from the author herself, from her author copies. These are finished and yes, I shall just put the clip in here. Hello, I am here with a rather exciting package. I just want to show the little bear on it. Anyway, before I flash my dress, let's get started. I have the package. <laughs> Look who it is! Oh my gosh! And I've got my personalised copy. <laughs> it says for Teresa, thank you so much for all your support as always, happy reading, and then a little heart, and of course it's signed. Nice! I'm so excited! <laughs> so of course I've got two copies, and I don't need two copies, so I will be giving away this one, I think. The one that's not addressed to me, but you'll still get a signed copy, so stay tuned to figure out how to win that. Next up, just a continuation of that, I found a little surprise when I started looking through the book itself, and probably embarrassed myself a little bit and finally crossed crying on camera off of my YouTube checklist. I was just flicking through this book. I looked at the acknowledgements and you'll never guess whose name is in it. Oh my fucking god. Oh my god. <laughs> a huge thank you to all the bloggers, booktubers, bookstagrammers and tweeters who have supported me so far and anyone who supports not my problem. I know how much effort you put in and I couldn't be more grateful. I want to mention a few of you here. Teresa, Sasha, Ams and Amber. I know there are others but after all this writing malarkey my brain is mushy and I, if I haven't mentioned you it isn't because I don't appreciate your effort. Your enthusiasm literally sells books and that means I can write more books. Thank you doesn't seem like enough but that's all I can do. <laughs> this just means so much to be acknowledged in this way and to know that my favourite author cares about me and appreciates the work that I do as much as I do and as much as I appreciate her work and I don't know I just I'm so so happy this is so unreal yeah I'm gonna go stop crying on camera and we can go back to the proper video <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this though and now I'm just going to put in some clips of me reading it I have tried to quite shorten these down and narrow them down a bit because we did not need 20 minutes of just me going oh my god I love it <laughs> because 
you're going to get that with the review. Hello, so I've just read the very first chapter of Not My Problem and I thought I'd just kind of pop in and give some of my first impressions. So yeah, first up, already loving it. I'm loving the narrator and her humour. The book's already full of humour. I really love it. It's also very Irish and I'm loving that too. I just, I'm loving so much this kind of introduction to the characters and some of the issues that I know the book's going to explore. I'm just so happy to be reading another Kira Smith book. Loving so much already. Loving that both these girls are just openly lesbian and it's not ever made to be like a big deal so far. It's just, yeah, that's what it is. Aideen has a Christian, Christian Stewart, we can all relate. Love it. And we've also got a himbo and I'm so ready for this himbo lesbian solidarity. Love Cavi already. So it's a bit later on. I've read 100 pages not my problem and I love it so much but I'm trying to like pace myself a bit because I want to savour this but it's so hard because it's so good and I'm reading so fast and I love it so much and oh my god I don't know what to do I'm terrified to finish it because I know I'm gonna miss these characters so much like I already missed them and it's been like an hour since I last read the book <laughs> it's so good so last night I was like I'm gonna go read I'm like set for this and then I went on Twitter and then I somehow ended up on TikTok and I don't even use TikTok but I still spent an hour on there so I didn't read quite as much as I planned but I am absolutely loving this book it's so when I'm reading it I'm so just not aware of time passing it's so completely immersive as soon as I start reading I'm in and I don't want to put it down and it's just the absolute best 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 feeling what I love about this book is that it can go from talking about syphilis of all things to with her pink cheeks and dark hair she looked like Snow White and it just makes me because that's so cute I love it so much and I just wanted to share that because I love that line an awful lot hello it is now 10 to midnight but I finished the book oh I really did love this so much I'll talk about it more coherently tomorrow but I loved it it wasn't exactly as I expected it to go, but it was it was fun and I loved it. And yeah, I, I'm not capable of saying any more than that, to be honest. Because right now I need to sleep because I'm not made for staying up this late. And yes, now that you've seen those little reaction clips, I'm going to just talk a bit about the book. I'm not sure if I'm going to call this a review or maybe like a book talk, just a casual discussion on the book. And as always, I have also got a written review, I'll link it down below, and I would really recommend giving it a read as well. I'm a lot more coherent in that than I imagine I will be just now, and it's all probably a lot better structured and everything. So, as you can already tell, I'm sure, I loved this book. It just so perfectly balances the fun and the lightheartedness and the rom-com moments with tackling really, really heavy subjects, and although I cannot speak on them being portrayed accurately or anything like that because I'm lucky enough to have not been in that situation, I thought that they're just handled with an awful lot of grace and sensitivity and there's nothing that stood out to me as like, well that's not very good is it? So overall I would say from my outsider experience it all seems to be handled very well. Kira is a social worker so she would have some experience in this field. So our main character is called Aideen and I love her so much. So Aideen is a rule breaker, she's proud, she's stubborn and she's witty and sarcastic and she uses this deflect from her problems and her real feelings which I can relate. But she's also just not in the best place regarding some relationships in her life, some situations and this is really taking a toll on her and really, as I said, Joanne gave a synopsis impacting her in all areas of her life. And I just loved her journey through the book and her kind of realisation of being able to put herself first and to ask for help and that she doesn't need to be so stubborn about it. And it's com a completely valid reaction to have to the situation and it's something that I think is quite common, but it, I just still loved watching as she learned to rely on other people and trust other people and to 
grow some self-confidence and really just come into herself in this story. I loved it an awful lot. And a big part of this is her relationship with Maeve and Cabby. So Maeve is our love interest and as I said, you know, she's a bit of a know-it-all and that can be quite irritating if you know a bit of a know-it-all. And Aideen would definitely agree with that from the beginning. But as she gets to know Maeve, you kind of see how these things that maybe annoy you from the outside become just cute quirks that Maeve has. You see that, yes, she's annoying, yes, she's intense, but she's passionate and she's just under a lot and lot of pressure and you really just grow to love her as well. And I loved these two girls' relationships as they grew closer and started letting down their walls and they're really quite similar in their stubbornness and deflection of feelings and all of that, but they were able to grow close and let down their walls and I loved it. You also meet Kavi and Kavi is the himbo to Aideen's lesbian. There's some strong himbo lesbian solidarity in Kira's books. Love it. Love it so much. Kavi is just like this ray of sunshine chatty. I love him. He's so so sweet. He just brightens every scene he's in. And Together, these three form this kind of misfits coming together and finding love and acceptance and support and a little found family dynamic. And I live for that shit. I love these three so much. There's a particular scene where they all end up in a bathtub together. Do not ask. And I love it so much. That's so tender and honest and I love so much. <laughs> And along with these lovely positive relationships, you do explore some more negative ones, some toxic ones, such as what's going on between Maeve and her best friend. And I don't want to spoil this whole plot or anything, but I really liked how this relationship was portrayed. And I think it's something that's very, very, very typical and it happens a lot. And I think it's really important to have in books and having Aideen kind of learning how to deal with that and how to notice that it's maybe not the healthiest relationship. And again, with Aideen's mum, I can't speak on how well done it is, but it's a situation, unfortunately, a lot, a lot of people face and the impact this relationship and her home life had on Aideen was so clear and really formed her personality, understood her motivations and her decisions through it and how it impacted her as a person. And it's such a, such a key, important part of her and her life. And I really liked the exploration we saw of it. So more in terms of writing and plot structure and all of that, again, amazing. I love the writing. I think I said in some of the clips, it's so immersive. I just can't put it down. It's so quick to read and just fun to read as well. Love, love, loved my experience of reading this. I did just fly through it a lot quicker than I planned. I accidentally stayed up way too late. And in with the writing is these really authentic characters, authentic humour and conversation and feelings. And Kira Smith does this so, so, so well. And these characters, everything about this book feels real authentic. Like it is really happening. And it's, it's such a talent. And I just, I cannot overstate how much I adore reading it and reading these books and these characters. So obviously this kind of main plot we've got is Aideen fixing other people's problems and I loved how this played in. I loved the people we met through it, the little problems we explored and how this all played into the resolution of the book. I obviously don't want to just tell you what the ending is because what's the point in that? But it just it played in so well and I really liked seeing that. And as well with that resolution, that ending, I thought it was done perfectly and it's difficult to say this in a non-spoilery way just because obviously the ending is a huge spoiler, but I will say that not everything is resolved. There's no, this is the end of the book, so we're going to wave a magic wand and everything's fixed and perfect. And that's not real, that's not authentic, and this book is, so that doesn't happen. You know, you know that these characters still have a lot of growing to do and there's still things that need to be done, but they're on the right track and yeah, it's just another way in which I think that this book and actually Kira's debut, the endings are very, very authentic and natural and what actually happens. And although that's not always what you want to read in a book, it doesn't set up false expectations of what can happen in real life and it does play into this authenticity of the book. Another thing 
that I loved about this book, similar to the falling in love montage, you've got a lesbian main character and her sexuality is already established, there's no conflict surrounding that, that just is, that's a set part and although obviously there's a sapphic romance, her sexuality doesn't play any other role in it and I really enjoyed that, you know, it's not a coming out story or anything like that. You know, she's got enough problems to deal with without someone adding in homophobia and love it so much and you know it's true for the falling in love montage as well and that's exactly what I want to see more of and that's not to say coming out stories or ones that do deal with homophobia aren't valid or necessary because they are and I love reading them but I also love reading stories where that doesn't exist where that's not a problem and I will say when I'm speaking of the relationship this is not is romance centered as the falling in love montage it is definitely i'd call it a coming of age story it's a lot more focused on aideen and her character and her problems and her just development with a romance on the side and a romance that does play a role in her development another thing that i loved is that this book is just unmistakably irish and in the way the characters speak like aideen calls her mom mom rather than mum. they say feck rather than fuck sometimes things like that slang references all of that completely irish and it just really just i can't think of the word i've been trying to think of it since i was writing my review last night but it really just fits you in the setting perfectly couldn't be anywhere else and i loved it so much particularly because for me as a scot i speak scottish words i don't do it here because you wouldn't understand me but when i'm with my friends my family all of that i speak quite differently and this book felt <laughs> very cool to read because it's like that even though I didn't recognize all the words it's more like how I speak to people I know how my school experience was because we had all these completely different words compared to what you would find in an American YA book or even an English one so yes as I said I didn't recognize all these words but you don't feel like you're not understanding at least in my experience because you can work out from the context that there's only really a couple of meanings you can have here you know what it's going to be and yes i just love that so 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 much and is it the first time i've seen a character call her mom mom because i say mom and i've not always said mom actually that's a more recent development because i was brought up speaking quite proper english just so that when i got to school i wasn't confused because i was learning a whole new language but yeah anyway tangent aside loved this little bits of language things i love language things <laughs> this book is just it's funny it's so genuinely funny kira smith writes humor so 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 well and the humor is teenager humor as well it's so authentically teenage there's social media references pop culture references all of that and it, you know it it's real teenager speak it sounds very authentic and again a talent i had quite a nice line in my review so i'm just going to read that um not my problem is laugh out loud funny and full of heart a coming of age novel that will stay with you long after the final page light-hearted and real not my problem is dairy girls in book form and a must read for all contemporary lovers and that's my overall opinion it's this lovely charming novel and it's full of wit and humor and really tough subjects explored with grace and sensitivity and it's it's such an authentic teenage experience and I love it so much. Of course, you may be wondering, how does it live up to the Falling in Love montage? Which we all know is one of my all time favorites. I was really worried that I was setting myself up, setting really high expectations for this book and that it couldn't possibly live up to it. It did, it lived up to expectations, it exceeded them, very impressed. And I could not pick a favorite fairly between this one and the Falling in Love montage because my experience of reading the falling in love montage my the reason i love it so much is the impact it had on me and the way it helped me accept my sexuality and all of that and that's so completely linked with my experience of the book that i can't separate it and judge the book on its own and so i cannot judge the two of them fairly can't compare them fairly because <laughs> because that Falling Love Montage had such a such an impact on me and this one didn't and that's not a bad thing you know not every book will change your life and although it didn't change mine I'm sure it'll change someone else's but yes I love them both so much 
for their own different reasons and I'm sure whatever Kira writes next I will also love for its own reason. So yes, this book, love it, so damn good. Make sure to pre-order it, to request it from your library, all of that so you can get it when it comes out and love it as much as I do. Speaking of, I'll put a pre-order link in the description for Bookshop and this will be an affiliate link and it just means I'll get a small commission if you use it. I'd really really appreciate it if you could and I do have just my general bookshop link in all of my videos if you ever fancy doing some bookshopping, supporting some independent bookstores and me. And yes, the final thing I want to talk about is why I have two copies. So I was sent two so I can give one away. And so I will be uploading giveaway posts at the same time I upload this video to my Instagram and Twitter. You can enter on both for a double entry and you'll just be follow me and Kira, retweet it, share it your stories, whatever. You don't have to do anything for it. And you'll win a signed copy. It's this one. A signed copy of Not My Problem. And as a little bonus for those of you who have watched this video, so thank you for watching, thank you for your support. If you add a blue and a yellow heart to your comment on your entries, I think I'll ask for your favourite sapphic book or something, then that will be an extra entry for you. You can do it on both platforms. Just a silly thank you. So yes, that has been my Not My Problem book talk, review, vlog moments. Bit of a mess, bit of an everything, but I really hope you've enjoyed. I hope you'll pick this one up. It's genuinely so good. I love it so, so much. So highly recommend. It's good teen fun light-hearted, it's joyful and even when you do have these dark moments you know that there's something joyful waiting for you and I love it. I really do and I really 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 recommend it. And just as our final part of the video we're doing a bit of a shelf update. Yes I have two copies of the Falling Love montage. No we don't need to talk about it. Thank you very, very, very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you in another video soon.